With spring well underway, now's the perfect time to bag yourself some extra plants. Gardeners are, on the whole, a pretty thrifty bunch, and as a gardener, I love a bargain. And if you do too, you're going to absolutely love this video, because I'm going to show you how you can get more plants through the wonderful propagation technique of division. Double, triple, or even quadruple your purchase by dividing vegetable seedlings like these. Let me show you. What I've got here are some charred seedlings and some leek seedlings. They're in these uh, six unit plug trays, so you'd expect maybe six plants. But in fact, I've got a cluster of four to five seedlings in each plug, so we're going to get loads more seedlings. Let's separate them out. The first job is just to get them all out of the plug tray. And you can see here, yes, there's about eight seedlings there. You can see that the roots are all tangled together and we need to separate these carefully without damaging the seedlings. So the trick for that is to swish them back and forth in a tray of water. And what that does is it gets all of the potting mix, removes it all from the roots, and then you can much more easily separate them apart. And this way, none of the roots are getting damaged and you can see what you're doing. You might take a few swishes here and there, break them off in sections and then you can get them peel them off individually. You might lose the odd one, of course, and that's fine, because uh, there's so many here. Look, they've got two seedlings there, a couple in that hand. There we are, that's not bad. We've got about 10 seedlings, I reckon. So the next job is simply to get them in our plug trays here. This is filled with an all-purpose potting mix, and then they can grow away. You could potentially plant them directly outside if uh, your soil's well prepared, but we've got a lot of pigeons here and a lot of slugs, and I just, I just feel more comfortable by starting them off in plug trays till they've filled their plugs and they're a little bit more robust, and then I can just uh, plant them out then. So they'll probably be in here for about two weeks until the roots have filled the plug tray. I've just uh, potted on two plug trays only from this charred tray here, and I've got 10 times the number of plants. How about that? I'll do the rest later. Now I'm just gonna work on these leeks. I've mentioned grocery store purchased living herbs before, but it's worth mentioning again, because gardeners who follow this very simple hack stand to get heaps of herbs for very little money. Now, if you look closely at this basil, you can see it's not one plant, but in fact, about uh, 20 individual plants all crammed together in this pot and we can separate these out to create many more plants. When selecting your herbs, you want nice lush green foliage that isn't yellowing or limping in any way. You want your plants to be strong so that they get off to a good start and don't struggle. You've got two options and I'll demonstrate them both. The first option is simplest and that's just to get in there and just kind of tease them apart into two or usually three clumps like that. In fact, that could be four clumps, but let's keep it as, uh, as three. And then simply pot them up into slightly bigger pots than the, the pot it came in. And what that means is that we're gonna have a situation now where the basil has got much more in the way of resources to draw on in the potting mix, and there's a lot more light from all angles. So although they're still quite clustered together, they should last for at least a couple of months this way and you can pick for much longer. So these will go possibly um, indoors to start with for a week because it's still a bit cold and basil is a, is a tender plant. But I'll probably bring them out to the greenhouse here and then harden them off to go outside later on if I want to do that. Oh, I love the smell of basil. Oh, beautiful stuff. Right, that's the first method. Our second option is to separate out the individual plants. So the first thing we're gonna do is just pull them apart like we did before into two or three clumps. And the roots do come away quite well, but then we can just start working from the edge, separating out individual seedlings. If they come away as two or three actually, that's probably all right. There we are, I've, I've got about a dozen plants so now all that's left to do is pot them up. And again, I'm using a standard all-purpose potting mix and uh, pots of a similar size to the pot they came in. 
if you've got like these clusters of like three there, that's fine because they'll push themselves apart and it's a bit of an insurance policy if one of them does kind of wither away. These are a little bit longer than ideal. Uh, I didn't have much choice at the grocery store. Ideally, you'd want them a bit shorter. That way they're not too lanky to start with, but we've got something to do about that shortly. There's one final step to do, and that's to nip out the very top, the growing points of the taller basil. And that's quite important, because uh, what that does is it encourages the plant to bush out from where you're nipping out. So rather than one thin, slender stem that's liable to get damaged, you'll get a more bushier, rounded plant, and that ultimately means more to pick as well. I've also got this pot of parsley here that I'm going to uh, separate out into individual plants. These will be grown on a bit in a bright and, for the basil, crucially frost-free place until they've bulked out a bit, and then I'll plant them outside, having hardened them off. And all that simply means is acclimatising the plants to the conditions outdoors. So they will be left out for slightly longer each day over a period of about 10 days. The basil is going to go with my tomatoes, some outside, some indoors. They're great companion plants and the parsley is going to go in amongst my beans and some other plants because the flowers attract hoverflies. So these are great companions as well as providing plenty of tasty pickings. With the parsley, just a little heads up. Some of these plants are quite uh, tall now, but you can't pinch them out and some of the roots will inevitably get slightly damaged. So don't be alarmed if you see some of the bigger leaves sort of wilting, going yellowing and dying back. Just let them do that and pick them off and you'll find fresh growth will come in from the center, oomph away and replace it and they'll be just fine. Spring is also a great time to lift up and divide more established plants like herbs. They'll get away quickly because they're just starting into growth and they'll settle into their new home quite uh, soon as well. I've got some mint here by these old stems here. I've left them for the uh, beetles and bugs, but I'm gonna dig some up, root around and see what we've got, because I'd like to divide some up to share with my friends. I've lifted it out and you can see it's quite a jumble. There's some nettles in here and some other weeds like uh, ivy. So I've got to just separate them out and then weed through it as well. But there's some good, uh, there's some apple shoots here and here. So we've got some uh, good growth on it already. So I'll pick out the weeds because we don't want those. And then see what we've got in the way of uh, clumps. So this clump I got in my hands here, I reckon we can get uh, at least two plants out of that. So I'm just tearing them apart. We've got some shoots here with some good strong roots and the same here as well. So there's two plants. There's some very nascent shoots at the bottom there. So that's gonna be good as a plant. Just to trim the old growth. And then I reckon we'll get a couple out of this as well. Out of that one clump, I've got four separate little clumps that I'm now going to pot up. This is apple mint, which is great in salads, also whizzed up into my green smoothies that I love, but best of all, it makes a delicious, refreshing tea. These are gonna be little presents for gardening friends when I go around to visit. I brought you up to this herb bed here, which we put together last summer. At the time, we lifted some oregano from elsewhere in the garden, and from memory, split it apart with two forks back to back, levered against each other, which you have to do with uh, larger herbs. And you can see that the oregano has really established nicely into this lovely knitted together mound, and it will grow really strongly this spring to give plenty to pick. You can pretty much divide any herb that forms a clump, so that includes the likes of chives. And you have to love chives for their pretty mauve flowers, a great choice for an edible edging, and the bees love it. Then there's lemon balm, thyme, marjoram as well, and of course, a host of other deliciously flavoured mints. There are many benefits to the plant that's actually being divided. It helps rejuvenate old clumps. By lifting it up and breaking it up, you're giving it a new lease of life, and the old, just sort of, withered away central core you can just chuck on the compost heap. I wanted to bring you down here to see the rhubarb. This is only a two-year-old clump and you can see here there's about all six or so shoots 
this is bulking up nicely. I reckon next year it's gonna be good to divide. I had a comment on our channel that said someone inherited a rhubarb plant from the turn of the last century and this clump had been in the family ever since, over a hundred years old. And that's the joy of lifting and dividing plants like this. It keeps it going for year after year, generation after generation. What a result! I've spent a little more than loose change and look how many plants I've got. I've got all of these individual herb and vegetable seedlings plus the mint from the garden that I've split up into separate clumps. This is what gardening is about. It offers you such great value for money, which I really, really love. Now, what's your favorite bit about gardening? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget you can also propagate a lot of herbs from cuttings. I'll include a link to that in the video description below. And look at these. We also did a video on taking cuttings of soft fruits and they've all rooted. They've got these lovely shoots in them. If you'd like to see that video, check the link out, which I'll also include in the description. Next episode, we're going to be looking at growing broccoli, which is a real treat, let me tell you. So check your subscribe and have turned on notifications. Happy gardening, and I will catch you next time.